Welcome to this three-part series on subjective refraction. Today, in subsequent videos, we will discuss the steps for subjective refraction. In this specific video today, we will focus on how to get the best sphere in subjective refraction. In the second video, we will discuss how to check if a patient really needs a cylinder and how to fine-tune both the axis and the power of the cylinder. Finally, the third video, we will discuss the final checks before a prescription is given. This includes binocular balancing and binocular best sphere. At the end of the three videos, I will give you a practice question to check your understanding on subjective refraction. So stick around to the end. My name is Dr. Lucy. Remember to subscribe in order to receive alerts when we upload other related videos. Subjective refraction should be done after objective refraction, but it can't still be done directly for adults. Be sure to check our other video on objective refraction if you have not watched it already. Something to note is that during the process of subjective refraction, accommodation should be relaxed to get the best results. The idea always is to give the maximum plus and the minimum minus lenses that give the best visual acuity for any specific patient. Always take account of the vertex distance, especially for the high prescriptions of more than six diopters. The vertex distance is the distance between the cornea and the back of the lens. Let us now look at the setup for subjective refraction. The patient should be seated at six meters from the Schnell lens chart or at about four meters, depending on the chart that you're using. These distances may vary depending on your chart. Make sure the room is well lit and then fit the trial frame to just make sure that everything is comfortable. The steps to conducting a successful subjective refraction starts with taking the visual acuity. Knowing the visual acuity guides you on where to begin, particularly if you do not have the objective refraction results. Remember, each line is approximately 0.25 diopter sphere. And a patient, for example, with a 6-9 vision can be assumed to have an error of plus minus 0.25 diopter sphere on average. The visual acuity should be taken each eye at a time. But don't also forget to take the near vision as correction is not complete until a patient can see far and also near optimally. Sometimes as we are taking visual acuity, we use the pinhole. And if visual acuity improves by a line or two with the pinhole, then the patient is most likely to have refractive error. The pinhole cuts off peripheral rays of light so that only the principal rays fall on the fovea, making the vision even better. If you notice that visual acuity worsens when you use the pinhole, the patient may have a macular dysfunction. So take a note of this. The next step is to get the best sphere. To do this, start with the objective results or the visual acuity guided sphere as we have just discussed. We normally start with the right eye, so occlude the left one. At this point, you do not know if a patient is myopic or hypermetropic, so you need to present both the plus and the minus lenses, asking the patient if any of these lenses improves their vision. Start with the plus lenses before the minus lenses because this helps to improve or to relax their accommodation. If they can read more with the plus lenses, for example, then insert the plus lens in the trial frame and let them read to the smallest possible line. If they get to the 6-6 line, add a plus and then a minus lens of a smaller connotation asking if they can still read. Remember always the point is to have the maximum plus and the least minus. And then if they have not reached the 6-6 mark, continue to add more plus than minus lenses until a point when they see there's no more improvement with either of the lenses. 
At this point, you may have reached the end point, but it's not over yet because you still need to perform the duochrome test to know whether you have overcorrected or undercorrected. This is very crucial, especially for the myopes. This is based on the chromatic aberration and occurs because different wavelengths of light are bent at different extents. For example, the longer wavelength, which is the red, is refracted less than the shorter one, which is the green. Therefore, this test tries to determine if we have overcorrected, especially for the myopes. Giving too much power to a myope forces them to accommodate to see and they will see the green better. The duochrome test should be performed monocularly at first. The duochrome test has letters in black against a red and another set against a green background. When you're doing this test, always ask the patient, are the letters in the red clearer? or are the letters in green? If the letters in green are clearer, then you need to add a plus 0 0.25 diopters. And if the red letters are clearer, then you need to add minus 0 0.25 diopters. The end point of this is obtained when the letters in both red and green chart appear equally clear. That way, you will not have overcorrected the myope or the hyperopic patient. And at this point, this is your best sphere for that eye. Remember, you started with the right eye, so do the same procedure, same process for the left eye until you get the best sphere for the left eye as well. I hope this video has helped you to be able to know how to get the best sphere for each of your patients one eye at a time thank you for listening remember our next video is on how to check if a patient needs a cylinder and then also fine tuning that cylinder remember at the end of the three sessions i will end up with a question for you to just make sure that you understand how to do the full subjective refraction again we also have the objective refraction so just watch it out to just get a glimpse of what you do long before you start the subjective refraction and subscribe if you want to get a lot for the videos that we upload until the next one goodbye